What's up guys, welcome to the setup video for Too Many Bones. In this video, we will be setting up a two-player game of Too Many Bones. First, we will choose a scenario. In this video, we will set up for a scenario against Nam, probably the most common first setup since he is the easiest and has the shortest game length. Grab Nam's Tyrant Encounter and his boss card and put them to the side for now. You will also need his special die. Let's start with placing the battle mat. This is where the main action of the game occurs, so place it in the middle. The battle mat is made up of the initiative meter, where turn order is determined, and the area where gear locks and baddies are placed to fight. The initiative meter is to the right and travels down the length of the mat. The northern portion of the mat is where baddies will spawn during missions. Ranged units are placed further back and melee are placed closer to the action. The same is true for the gear lock spaces to the south. If you have the adventure map, go ahead and place that next to the battle map. This records our journey through Daylor, and in the right bottom corner counts the number of days you've journeyed. This starts at day one. We will next place the glass bead on the spot marked Obender. This is where we will begin our trek. In this scenario, we will travel to Shalefist, a journey of at least six days and more if challenges are failed. Next, we will sort the baddies. Since we are playing against Nam, we will need all baddies with the three symbols shown on the boss card. I've sorted the baddies into each of their respective piles by their symbols. We will use the trolls, the orcs, and the scales. Taking these three piles of baddie chips, we will separate each of them based on baddie points. We will separate them into ones, fives, and twenties. We will randomize each set and stack them up into piles, still separated by baddie points. We will now place these stacks next to the battle mat for ease of access. At the top of the battle mat, we will place a few stacks of health chips. We will also take the four lane markers and place them at the top of the battle mat as well, aligning each with the correct color on the battle mat. These are the baddie initiative dice. They will help to determine player turn order so they are placed above the initiative meter. We will now create the encounter deck. Since we are playing against Nam, we will take a look at the number 8 on his card. We need to draw general encounter cards for that number, minus 3, so we will draw 5 encounter cards from the general encounter cards. We will take Nam's Tyrant encounter card and shuffle it with the 5 general encounter cards that we just drew. We will now take the special encounter cards 1 through 3 and place them on top of our encounter deck, special encounter 1 being the topmost card. At Shalefist, we can place Nam's chip and die. That's where we will be facing him. In between the adventure map and the battle mat, we can place our encounter deck. Next, we'll place our loot cards. Shuffle the loot cards as well as the trove loot cards and place them next to the battle mat. Throughout the game, our gear locks will gain loot from their exploits that they can use in and out of battle. Now we will choose our characters. In this scenario, we will play as Tink and Picket. Tink is an engineer of sorts, so he builds bots that he can deploy on the battlefield. Picket is a medic, so he will use his medkit and other fashionable healing items to cure his team of any impairments. Let's take a brief overview of the character mats. The top left shows the stat area. It shows the character's health, attack, dexterity, and defense levels. To the right shows the active dice and locked dice area, as well as the backup plan. We will talk about these extensively in a different video. The largest part of the mat shows skills that each gear lock can gain through leveling up during the scenario. For example, Picket has skills focused on healing gear locks, as well as poisons and melee attacks. Each character also needs their dice. 16 skill dice and 4 stat dice. Place these next to the character mats. 
Next, we will take each character's chip and give them their requisite health. Patches gets 5 health chips while Tink starts with only 3. Somewhere easy to reach, we will place the 4 lock picking dice used for the trove loot. Each character also needs their initiative die, so we can place those on their health stacks. Somewhere else easy to reach, also place the d6 as well as some effect dice. Next to those, we can place a handful of attack and defense dice, and we are now ready to play the game. Stay tuned for more videos in this Too Many Bones series.